Welcome to Coping with COVID-19. I'm Dr. Ali Sharma. This is an interview series and safe space to collectively cope and share our stories through the COVID-19 pandemic. Quick disclaimer, please note that this interview series is for informational purposes only and is not considered medical advice. Please consult your own provider for any issues you may be facing. And if you are in crisis, please call 911 or your local emergency services. Today, I am joined by Nurfarini Dying, who goes by Nini. Nini is co-founder and CEO at My Harapan in Malaysia, a foundation established in 2010 dedicated to helping youth achieve their true potential by empowering them to make positive social impact. I am bringing on Nini to join me now. Welcome to Coping with COVID-19. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Okay. Well, I'd love to start by introducing what you do. Um, you run a foundation which also has a VC component that supports uh, social entrepreneurs under the age of 35. So please uh, describe what you do. Uh, so yes, we have been working for the Youth Trust Foundation or otherwise known as My Harapan. Essentially, it means uh, My Hope or Malaysia's Hope. And we believe that the hope of Malaysia is in the hands of our young people. So we we think that we need to be able to provide them with opportunities to for them to discover themselves so that they may be able to uh, use their strengths to contribute to people and the uh, planet uh, you know and and fulfill their true potential so uh, we also have uh, a vc element under our uh, not for profit which provides uh, essentially young people with one who have a desire to pursue a, a career in social entrepreneurship to have access to financing, uh, which uh, we will we provide uh, from early stage right to uh, the uh, slightly later stage. So we and we we make the connections. So it's been a, an interesting journey, uh, definitely. So uh, we've seen in how uh, there's a lot that young people can actually do and we are here to actually provide the facilitation so that they can actually achieve what, what they want to be able to achieve uh, with impact. Okay, great. And so, uh, you know, I understand that you support a lot of social enterprises that then support uh, vulnerable groups such as single mothers, at-risk youth, who then are more vulnerable during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. So tell us a little bit or a few stories about businesses you support, what's happened to them during this time and what they're doing to pivot or innovate to support these groups. Right, so I think as a social entrepre enterprise, uh, as social entrepreneurs, I mean, uh, on the on top of their minds is always about how do I uh, solve any social issues pertaining to my um, main target community. So I think in, with the fact that you know with COVID-19 it has restricted a lot of movements a lot of the companies aren't unable to uh, you know do business as usual so they've decided to look into how they can actually provide a relief immediately uh, to the population at large so you know we have um, some of our companies who are actually tailors, you know, custom, uh, do, they do custom ta tailoring. Uh, they now have changed it so that they are able to produce masks as well as PPE, PPEs. Uh, and they are doing this effort hand in hand with uh, both the government and through uh, donations and uh, uh, in, with corporations, with many, many NGOs as well on the ground. So we're seeing how, you know, to stay afloat, they're doing as best as they can at this moment. Uh, what we do, what we like to do is also to think about what will happen post the MCOs and see whether or not there are many, many ways that I think that there, there will be a new norm, definitely. So we want to be able to observe and think ahead as to what are the sort of things we can actually do to ensure that uh, the skills and the competencies that they, um, uh, that they have uh, and will we'll meet uh, the future needs and projected needs maybe six months down the line. So, and we've also had barbers, uh, barber shops who are also uh, making sanitizers instead, uh, are trying to get them to actually do uh, a lot of these products at home or wherever they can within, uh, you know, within the limitations uh, appropriate by determined by the social distancing. So there's a lot of things that I feel these these guys can do and you know we have also fmb companies which are now doing full-time online deliveries 
and that's that's the thing they've never done it before and they felt that this is the time they can actually do it so they've they've actually transformed the way that they do business okay so you're seeing a lot of flexibility and adaptability especially where there is a mission of supporting vulnerable groups right so there's a continued mission to do so during this time um, how do you as an organization how are you supporting perhaps the need to pivot or supporting your social entrepreneurs if they're stuck or if it's difficult to pivot? Uh, I, I think that's something that we also have to do ourselves. Uh, uh, first is to go through that, uh, that mindset that we have uh, in each, uh, on the onset. There was a lot of fear involved and that was the same thing with all our entrepreneurs uh, as well. So uh, I think the team made a lot of calls. We, were, we told them that we were there for them, that you know we'll go through and whether this... Uh, through this storm together as opposed to them you know being alone and feeling as if that there's, there's no support whatsoever right now so I think that was the first step which we thought was uh, very meaningful for them uh, at the very beginning so now it's really about okay now that we've gone through that process of okay th this is this is our new reality what can we do now so it's always we're always there you know as is as easy as giving them a phone call. Uh, we are now having uh, little workshops that we provide uh, depending on their needs. Like we have marketing, how to put their business online. There are many others that are already doing this uh, too. So we provide them with the networks and the, yeah, it's, just, it's just about giving them the links to all the sources that are available right now. Um, there's so many that's free. So that, that's pretty amazing. It's just, uh, you know, them coming back and saying, okay, how do we do this? Can you help us do this? So that's where we come in. There's also, we also have been giving some, we've relaxed some of our terms when it came, comes to loans. So they don't, uh, moratorium so they don't necessarily have to pay their loans at this point in time up to six months and then after which they will have to design and uh, uh, come up with a new plan with us as well on board to see how things can be done in this uh, very near future from six to one year so i think it depends on the entrepreneur some entrepreneurs are very savvy uh, they're very creative uh, and but most of them are of course we're on the somewhat same boat uh, so that's that's where we come in as well. So we're not just uh, pure uh, investors who you know we're, we're not giving money and and leaving everything uh, you know for them to steer the ship. You mentioned fears and anxieties. So actually, can we go back? Like when this pandemic started to uh, you know affect the consciousness, at least in Malaysia, of the people. You as a leader, how did it affect you? You know, do you remember your initial thoughts? And what happened? What was the process for you? I think it was a roller coaster, right? As far as I'm concerned, I'm usually very happy or lucky, and I'm very silly. So I think the the fact that I'm very silly also helps with the fact with with uh, you know being a leader and the fact that I'm also the mom, the chef, uh, the teacher. So you know everything came came together, and uh, I think at the very beginning there was no time for fear to uh, to feel anxious uh you know i have to ensure that this we're sustainable as well as an organization and how do we do this from now on and how do we ensure that my team is also uh knows where we are going and wh what the direction is now that a lot of things have changed so i think uh it's the fact that you i've had made uh, quite a number of sleepless nights thinking just thinking about uh i'm i mean it's always been the case where i have always felt responsible for for not only my co-workers but you know all the um, communities out there that we've helped and in getting young people to also be part of this so only uh, when you understand that actually I'm not in this alone either uh, that that my teammates I mean there's a reason why you know it's called a team uh, and uh, there was a lot more interactions also online everybody was adjusting and I think after that uh, you know you you just are able to think you know you, you can you can go through this with others uh, you know people are there to help you as well so I think with is shared responsibility with uh, everyone uh, my husband's on it too, so <laughs> my kids too. So I feel that it's a team. Yeah. Yeah. So final question. 
Um, how has it been for you to manage your work, and which sounds like a, a large amount of energy, right, into figuring out how to pivot and go online for you in terms of education workshops and support everyone you do, and be a mother and support your children and your household? I think it's uh, taking it easy helped as well. I've always been quite chill as a mom, uh, and I do believe that uh, education comes from many forms. So. Uh, you know, we, the fact that I, I'm actually sitting down and going through the work that they, that needs to get uh, be done is uh, while it's a is a great effort on my end. Uh, I'm fe feeling as if it's uh, very meaningful. Uh, I'm actually sitting next to them, which was never the case before. Mm -hmm. Going through what it is that they learn, I actually understand, you know, what their challenges are. I get to know their different personalities as they learn because it's very different. Uh, you know, I actually get to see my uh, son, who usually is super talkative uh, with us, but the moment that he enters classroom mode, he's a totally different uh, boy altogether. So that was quite interesting to also see that, oh, okay, this is actually what happens when he goes physically to school. So to be able to see what are the sort of things you can actually do to ensure that maybe he opens up a little more is something that we are more conscious of. So... Uh, I uh, and the great thing about uh, all of this is that I feel that I'm a lot more disciplined. <laughs> I have you know scheduled times where yes, there's class for uh, we have to be able to share devices. So how do we ensure that that works for everyone? I think and in making sure that therefore when for the one or two hours I'm super productive, uh, and it doesn't matter if after that you know I'm flat and I'm gone, but that's fine too, uh, in managing the fact that it's okay. Uh, uh, and my husband prefers my cooking now than, than ever before. So that's, <laughs> so, yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of practice, uh, which I feel, you know, in cooking and in scheduling and ensuring that, uh, that I'm more productive and in ensuring that I know that it's okay to not do anything as well. Uh, I think that's been great. So I might even continue this post the movement control. Oh, that's great. So yeah, silver lining and all of this. Yeah. Well, Nini, mm -hmm. thank you so much for your perspective. I really appreciate you speaking with me. Thank you so much. So now let's get clinical. What stands out to me in my interview with Nini are a few things. The fear and anxiety that's affected everyone during this context. No one is alone on this and what people are doing to support others during this time, which indeed is a form of social support. And we know that social support is protective for mental health. On the first, Nini mentioned that among her leadership team and among the social entrepreneurs she supports, there was a lot of fear and discussions, which quickly led to innovations around how to change the way they were working. For example, virtual webinars from her team to those she supports, to the entrepreneurs shifting gears, such as the barbershop pivoting to make PPE, so that they can continue to support vulnerable groups and their employees continue to fulfill their mission. I love also hearing how as a working mother, Nini has found the silver lining in being closer to her children, gaining insight into how they operate within the pursuit of their education, and has found a new equilibrium in mastering the workplace and home under one roof. Thank you, Nini, for your important perspective and for the work you do. No doubt the support of vulnerable groups in our society who may be disproportionately affected during the COVID-19 pandemic is of utmost importance during this time. I'm Dr. Ali Sharma. Thank you for joining me on Coping with COVID-19.